Hey buckaroos and buckarettes, it's good to be back with you. And in this little video I'd like to show you how to plot two surfaces that correspond to two nonlinear equations and how to do it in MathCAD. Now I'm using MathCAD version 15 right now. As I'm uh, making this video in February of 2021, uh, Prime 6 is available, but from what I can tell, it looks like the, the adoption rate of Prime 6 is pr pretty low, and there's still a large community using version 15, so I'll do this in version 15. If we're going to plot two equations, we obviously need two equations, so I've typed those in beforehand, so you don't need to watch me type. And all we're going to do to start is we're going to plot them individually using a surface plot. So it's pretty easy. Go up here to Insert, Graph, Surface Plot. And I'll put this over here where it's a little easier to see and maybe uh, blow it up a little bit. Now the placeholder there is automatic and I'm just going to go ahead and type in F.1. Now I don't need any arguments or anything. It generates the grid for you using uh, some defaults and it'll make the plot. All you've got to do is just click somewhere else and there, there's your plot. Well, it's there. I mean, technically it's there, but that looks pretty nasty. Let's, let's see if we can clean this up a little bit. So all you've got to do is double click to turn on the 3D plot format window and we can start making changes. Now the first thing I want to change is I want, I want more points in the grid here. So go to quick plot data and you can see that it assumes 20 steps in each in both the X and the Y direction. So let's bump that up. Let's move that up quite a bit. Make it 40 and 40. And I'll hit apply here. Well that looks a lot better. Now I want to rotate this plot. You can't do it with the plot format window open. If I try it, it dings at me. It throws an error. So I'm going to say OK. And I'm going to rotate that around a little bit, make it easier to look at. Now the first thing I'd like to do is label the axes because I don't know which one is X and which one's Y. I don't, I'm not that insightful. So let's double click on that, open up the window again and go to the axes tab. So let's turn on label for X and I'll just call it X axis to make it easy. And Y axis, I'll turn that one on. And apply. Now oh, there, there. Now I know which one's which. Well, Black and white's good, but it would be nicer if it was color. So let's let's go to appearance here and turn on the color map. There we go. Now if you go to advanced, you can use different color maps. The default is called rainbow. There's another one called fire that's kind of slick. There's fire. I, I kind of like that one. It's kind of electric. But let's go back to rainbow since that's the default one. What else would I like to do? Well, I like looking at grids. They, they, they give me a sense of uh, where this plot is in space. So let's go back to axes and draw grid lines for X, Y, and Y, and let's do Z. Well, I'm not a huge fan of that green. Let's, let's fix that too. Let's go to this light gray. That, that seems to be a good way to see the grids without it being ob too obnoxious. There. That's much better. I'm going to say OK here. And let's let's turn this around a little bit so we can see it. Yeah, that's looking pretty good. You can see I can see through the grid here. See right there? I can see right through that mesh. Well, what if I want to change that? I'll double click again. Let's go to uh, Appearance. And I can do things like hide lines. There. See, now I can't see through that anymore. That often makes this a lot easier to look at. Now you have some fill options. I can fill surfaces. And you can see what happened. You turn that back off. Whoops. There. See the that axis disappeared? When I say fill surface, the whole surface becomes opaque. Not just hiding lines, but the whole surface is opaque now. There, now I can't see that axis behind it. Well, that makes this a little easier to look at. Now, if I say fill contours, it really is going to fill. Now, that's a lot more difficult to look at, I think, so I'm going to stick with fill surface for right now. There are a bunch more options for you to look through, and I encourage you to mess with those. But to keep the video short, let me go ahead and change this to F2. There. 
know, it, it kept all the formatting and everything. So this is this is nice and easy to look at. Now I don't want to look at F1 and F2 separately. I'd like to look at them together. And there's a couple reasons you might want to do that. One is that you might want to know what happens when you set F1 equal to F2. In that case, you're trying to find values of X and Y that make F1 and F2 equal to one another. And it's easy to do to see that if we plot it. So all I got to do here is I'm going to, I'm going to plot F1 first and just hit a comma F2 and it'll show me both of those. Well, it does, but it's ugly. So let's double click and start fixing this. I'll move this over. Plot 1 is the surface we were working with before. That's F1. F2 is plot 2, and you can see that it's added, but it doesn't have any of the formatting. So let's fix that. Let's click on plot 2 and go back through all our choices. So let's give it the same grid that plot 1 had. Let's also turn on color map. That's better. And let's fill the surface. Wow, look at that. That's a lot easier to look at. I'm going to say OK here. And you can kind of see in here, it's, it's not too hard to now see right there where the F1 and F2 cross each other. It's not quite a circle, but it's probably some kind of ellipse or something, something at least close to an ellipse. And now I can look underneath it and see that same thing. It's, it's easy to see the intersection of those two surfaces. Now if you want to look at this a different way, so that you, it's very, very clear where the intersection of those two surfaces are, let's do this. Let's define a third variable, a third function I guess, F3, that's the absolute value of F1 minus F2. And just to keep it off the page break, I'll move all this stuff over and mash it over there a little bit more. So rather than have F1 and F2 both on that, let's, let's just make this F3 now and see what I get. I'm looking at it from the bottom. Let's rotate it again and look at it from the top. Now it's really easy to see that same surface. And the nice part about it is that surface is now at zero. Well, it's supposed to be, but it's not, yeah, it's pretty close. But it isn't zero everywhere because just because of the way the mesh is. If I want to increase the size of the mesh further, I can. Now you get to a point of diminishing returns here. But you can see that it's very clear where the solution is. It's the minimum value of this surface and it's that uh, circular shape there. Maybe it's a parabola, maybe it's a circle, I'm not sure which, or it's at least close to those I guess. So there you have it. There's how to plot two surfaces in MathCAD 15. It's not hard to do and it's a great tool for trying to visualize complicated functions like this. I hope this helps and we'll talk to you next time.